Hi, so I wanted to make a video that kind of gives a more in-depth understanding or explanation behind senders and receivers um, so that people can kind of understand what's actually happening when they're using them uh, other than just kind of rebuilding what someone else has made. I want to give you guys the actual knowledge to understand what's happening with these so that you can actually really apply them into what you're wanting to do. Now, before we get into that, I just want to make sure that you guys know to look at the VRC documentation. Uh, it is actually really important to look at this so that you can understand what's happening uh, with these new components and things that were being given uh, in the game. Because this does a good job getting, getting you off the ground and kind of understanding what things can do so that you can then experiment and do other stuff on top of that. I will link the documentation uh, in the description below. Uh, it'll go to the contacts here, but the avatar dynamics are right here. Got this entire list, avatars, 3.0, and then dynamics here. And so something that's good for people to know is that these colliders are built into the game as standard on every avatar. These are just on every avatar. And the fingers and the hands also function as colliders for fizz bones. These other objects do not at the moment. Uh, they might in the future, but currently in the beta, they do not. But these all double, uh, well, the hands and the fingers double as senders, and everything else here functions as a sender in the game, just naturally built in. So you don't actually need to create a sender to do things in game if you're just wanting to use your hands or your fingers or feet, torso, and head. Uh, these are just all naturally in the game. If you want to test things in Unity, though, you will need to create a VRC hand send or a VRC contact sender that can function as a hand or feet or something so that you can test these things in Unity. But I just want to make sure that people know this before hopping into the rest of uh, the rest of this here. Another thing, too, is I want to just give you guys kind of an example between the constant, the on enter and the proximity so you can kind of see how that interacts um, with senders and receivers as well. So we will go ahead and hop in here. I went ahead and stripped down my avatar here to where it just has the fizz bones on it and nothing else. And so what we're going to do is we will just make a layer here that is going to be an example layer. Um, you can follow along with this if you like, but this is not going to be strictly for making a functional thing and game that you'd want to use. I'm trying to give you guys an example of how these things work. So you can then apply them to different things you might want to do in the game animation wise. Um, if you're wanting to test these in Unity, which I highly recommend you do, you want to make sure that you have a FX layer in your controller here and the animator. Uh, not the animator where you do your animations, but the animator component that is in the inspector right here on your avatar. That's where your descriptor and stuff is. Although it doesn't matter if your FX is in this um for testing in unity it only matters right here for testing in unity so we'll just go ahead and close this descriptor so with that out of the way we have our avatar here we don't have anything in this avatar this is just a test fx so i can kind of give you guys an example um let's go ahead and set up so we've got our layer here let's set up a float parameter and we're just going to call this float contact so that we'll know if contact is zero or if contact is one now what we want to do is create these objects on our avatar itself. I've seen people have issues where they create their senders and they place them outside of their avatar and then things don't actually trigger. When you're testing these on your avatar, you want to make sure that your senders and receivers are on your avatar and the hierarchy here. Now for the sake of the example, I'm going to create spheres um, that are visible so you can see what's happening here. Uh, like what we're colliding with and stuff here a little bit more easily. However, you don't need to make spheres or physical objects to have these contacts on them. You can just create an empty game object and then toss one of these on it, sender or, sender or receiver. But for the sake of this example, I'm going to just create physical objects that you can see a little bit easier. I'm going to change the size here just a little bit smaller and we will duplicate this and we'll make three of them. 
And what we want to do is we will do receiver uh, constant. We'll do receiver on enter. And we will do receiver rocks emity. Okay. And we're going to make one more sphere. Uh, we can just duplicate this one here. And we're going to call this one our sender. Now, what we do is on our receiver constant here, we will add component and you'll just want to type in contact and you'll want to toss receiver onto it, VRC contact receiver. When you do that, you'll have this here, which we just saw in the documentation where we have radius where we can change the scale of our, uh, our receiver. You have position where you can change the X, Y, and Z position without actually changing the transform of it. Um, you can do that with X, Y, and Z here, so you can change these different spots. You can also change the rotation, which you really won't see because it's a sphere. Um, you can turn off whether or not you can interact with this receiver, if others can interact, and whether or not this parameter is local, if you're wanting to sync these over the network using a parameter in your parameters list. However, you do not need to do this if you don't want to. Um, while the animations are a little buggy right now because the network as a whole is having issues uh, doing animations, uh, as it says down here, it is not necessary to use a synced parameter as defined by the VRC expressions parameter object. Uh, it's updated on both the local and the remote machine. So if you if you want to, you can sync it um, if you want to use the local only, but you do not need to. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get a receiver set up on each of these. So I just tossed a receiver on here. So this first one is going to be constant. Our second one is going to be on enter. And our third one is going to be proximity. And what we want to do is we want to set this up to where it's going to drive our contact parameter here. So what we want to do is put contact in here. And what happens is whenever our sender will enter this receiver, the receiver will then set this parameter that we've defined here, contact, to the value of 1. You could change this to 0.5 if you wanted to, or 0.75, or 26. You could do it to whatever you want, but we're just going to use 1 for now. With on enter, um, what happens is we can put contact in here. It will have a minimum velocity that the sender has to have for it to trigger this value to 1. So if you made this something like 20, then something would have to be the, the receiver or the sender that this interacts with would have to be going extremely fast for it to then allow this to be triggered to set the value to 1. We're going to leave this to point, uh, let's, let's put this at uh, 1. We'll put this at 1. And then for this here is proximity. So how close our receiver is to the center of this sphere is how high our parameter will be driven. So from zero to one. So we'll put contact in here as well. And now what we want to do is add a tag to it. And we're just going to use uh, finger index as our example. Say you wanted to set this up for like a nose boop or something. So we're just going to put finger index as our tag for all of these. And finger index there we go and so on here this is going to be our sender we're going to put a vrc contact sender on this com on this component and we add in our tag because we want this to interact with finger index so now what will happen is this sender will interact with these receivers as if it were your index finger in game so whenever you set this to finger index on your receiver, you don't need to set up anything else because these are naturally already on your fingers in the game. So we're just doing this for testing purposes. And what I'll do is I will toss red onto this orb. I will toss blue onto this one, green and yellow. Just give us a little bit of like distinction between what we're doing, what we're uh, messing with here. Um, another thing too, is if you have multiple different uh, receivers that are all on at the same time and they're all driving the same parameter, 
then um, these will actually overlap even if you're interacting with it and it won't set it to uh, to one. I'll kind of show you what I mean here. I have two animations here set up. Uh, they don't do anything. They're just here to, to exist. Um, so what we're going to do, I always use right defaults off. I highly, highly, highly recommend that everyone use right defaults off. However, I do know that it can mess up facial animations if you don't have your facial expressions set up properly. Um, I'm not going to get into that on this video, but just know that everything that I do is with right defaults off because it is far less buggy whenever you're creating animations and it will be a lot easier to work with avatar dynamic stuff with right defaults off. Just so that you guys are aware of what I'm doing here. So I'm creating transitions here. We're just going to make these instantaneous transitions and they're going to use our contact. So we're using our contact float here for our transition. And whenever our contact float is greater than 0.95, so whenever it's one, uh, it's going to drive to this animation right here. And let me set this one back up. So we will turn off, or we'll set contact here to turn off our animation when it's below 0.95. And so I'm going to show you how this breaks whenever you have multiple receivers. Uh, whoops, there we go. And so you'll have to toggle off these other two if you are following along for it to actually drive our parameter here. Give it a second to load up here. There we go. So you can see our contact is at zero right now. And whenever we enter this, this receiver, it's still going to be zero, even though we're in it. And the reason for that is because these two are here still sending a signal for zero. So if I turn these two off and then I click our sender. So whenever this makes contact with our, our uh, receiver here, it's going to set contact to one and it's going to transition to this animation. There you go. It's set contact to one and it stays at one as long as our, our sender is inside of this. As soon as it's out, it goes back to zero. And that's what the contact uh, receiver essentially does, is as long as there is contact with a uh, sender that meets the tag, um, the tag conditions in here, then it will constantly be setting your, your float to one. And as soon as, a, as soon as any and all of the senders are outside of it, it will go back to zero. So now what we'll do is we'll hide our constant and we will go to our on enter. Now, if you notice, when I enter slowly, nothing happens, right? Nothing's happening. The reason for that is because we set our minimum velocity to one. So if we do this a little faster, see how it blips to one? It's very fast, it's one frame, but it will blip to one. But if we do it slowly, then it doesn't do anything. And so you can use this to kind of control, like I have a lightsaber and based on the velocity of the hit, it will trigger the animations. And if it's too slow, then it won't trigger animations. So you can use that for something like this here. And what we'll do is we'll toggle this one off. And proximity, I have not personally used very much actually at all in anything that I've done. But essentially what should happen here is as this gets closer to the center, you can see the parameter gets driven closer and closer to one until it's entirely one. And you saw how this didn't transition until we reached 0.95. So as soon as we go below 0.95, it goes back down. Even though we're making contact with this, we have to be making enough contact to send it above 0.95. So now we're back above. And so you can use this for an example I gave someone earlier was you could use this for like a button press to drive um, the motion time of a blend shape. And that blend shape might make the button be pressed down the more the, the higher the blend shape goes from zero to 100. And so what you could do is you could actually drive that blend shape based on the distance of this contact here to the center of your receiver. And so that's kind of a basic rundown of the different kinds of uh, receivers that you have here to actually play with and do things with in the game here. 
Um, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you guys just make simpler things to kind of get used to how these work. So like if you wanted this to be on your nose, what you could do is you could go into the head of your avatar. See neck, we'll go to the head and we're just going to grab receiver constant and toss it on our head. And then what we'll do is we'll zero it out. And so now it's on the center of our head. We're going to just scale it down really quick so that it's smaller. Okay. Now what we can do is we can just move this up a little bit, move it forward and position it where we want it on the nose. And so say we're happy with that. And again, ignore the actual physical mesh renderer here. You don't need this. You can just make these game objects if you really want to. I'll take these off so you can just see it as a game object. So this is essentially what your empty game object would be. And you'd have your contact receiver on it and it interacts with index finger, right? And so what you could do is if you had it set up to where it had an animation to play whenever this interacts with it, um, it would do like a normal nose boop whenever it touches your, your nose here. Oh, I have things misaligned. So if you do a normal nose boop, it would actually play an animation um, because it's entering this receiver's contact area. And what I can do really quick is just show you an example of this actually in action on the uh, the main avatar I have here. Um, but again, I just want to make sure that people understand what these different components are actually doing and not just uh, blindly following tutorials on how to set up exactly one thing. It's good that you understand these things so you can understand how they actually interact with the game and other people in the game. So what we can do is I have animation set up. Actually, I think I have a test FX on this. I do. Let's toss our normal FX. There we go. We have our normal FX on here now. So what happens is down here, <laughs> this mess of stuff, I have it set up to where this sits on an empty clip because I have my facial expressions up here very quickly. The lower your layer, then it will override previous layers going up. So I have this set here to just fire my happy face, among other things, whenever contact is made with my my nose uh, right here. So whenever nose boop is contacted with uh, index finger, as well as some of these other things, um, it will play the face, uh, I believe. I might need to swap my FX here outside of, let's see, color FX and this here, and then our nose collider is nose boops, interacts with finger. I might have taken that off of here. No, I didn't. Okay, there we go. So now whenever we, I think it was because I changed my FX in play mode, which uh, I don't believe you're supposed to do. I've never done it before. So that might've broken it. So now whenever we pull this down, it should interact with our nose. Yes, there we go. And so it plays a little sound animation and it droops down my ears and it straightens out my tail whenever I touch my nose here. And you can see down here in the contacts logic, Whenever I interact with my nose, it plays my worried face. And then off here. Same with the ears. Whenever I touch my nose, it's being driven the exact same way. So whenever a nose boop is greater than 0.95, it will cause this to play. And then I also have in a different layer here somewhere. Uh, nose boop squeak. And so whenever your nose boop is greater than 0.95, it plays that animation that toggles on the sound. This animation right here just toggles on my audio source for my sound. And then my off one toggles off the audio source whenever I stop touching it. Uh, and I think that's pretty much everything. I have the tail logic as well, but uh, that's just up here. It goes to tail wag worried whenever I interact with that. And so you can set these up in multiple layers to actually do these different things if you want to. 
Or you can combine them into one animation. It just kind of depends on how you want to do things. I have mine split up, but you can do it like this. I have it set up for head pets too. And so you can do these different things and make things more interactive. And if you really wanted to, you could use a proximity for some of these. And maybe like the closer someone's hand is to your head, the faster this wags, like faster and faster. Um, you could even set it up to where whenever someone nose boops your face, maybe you have a uh, blend tree set up for your eyes and face so that like the closer they get to your face, the more worried you get. And then when they actually touch your nose, it does another animation or something. There's a lot of different things you can do between these different uh, receivers that can open up a lot of just like different fun things people can do with their avatars. But I wanted to just kind of give a example of how these different receivers worked um, so that people actually kind of understand like how these are being used and not just like outright replicating them without knowing what's what's going on with them. So that's generally how um, senders and receivers work with a little bit more in-depth. Um, and so I hope you guys have fun with this. If you guys have any questions, uh, please just toss them down in the comments. I'm more than happy to answer questions. Uh, if you have any requests for different things for me to cover and explain, um, I can do that as well. I mean, I could go through if people really want me to, and I can explain the logic behind how my shield works for my force field. Um, how the bullet sounds work um, with like my lightsaber and the shield and other things as well. These all are being driven by the contact uh, system and VRC now. So just drop it down below in the comments if you want help with anything or want me to go through these other uh, systems that I have set up and kind of explain them so people can understand like the capabilities of this system.